This is a 2010 Lexus LS 600 HL, and it looks like a fairly boring, normal sedan, almost like a larger Toyota Camry. It isn't. The LS 600 HL was the ultimate Japanese luxury sedan of the 2000s, and it was designed to compete with flagship European luxury sedans like the Mercedes-Benz S600 and the BMW 760. And this is the ultimate version with the executive package. This car carried a sticker price of around $135,000 back in 2010. Today, I'm going to show you around it. I've borrowed this LS 600 HL from a viewer here in Southern California, and it really is a special car. You see, back in the 2000s, and still today, the German full-size luxury sedans had V12s in their top trim levels. And Toyota wanted its luxury brand, Lexus, to compete with the Germans on every level. But they didn't want to develop a V12 for certification in North America, so instead, they gave us this. The LS600HL has a 5-liter V8 with a hybrid component for a total output of 438 horsepower, which is exactly how much power the BMW 760 V12 was making back when this car was new. Probably not a coincidence. The LS 600 HL was also incredibly subtle. This entire generation of Lexus LS, which was sold from 2006 to 2017, was totally under the radar. A gorgeous, comfortable, reliable luxury sedan that didn't broadcast wealth like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class did when it was redesigned in 2007. But that doesn't mean this car wasn't luxurious. The base price for the top-end LS 600 HL L model was well over a hundred thousand dollars back in 2010 and the executive package was a twelve thousand dollar option and this car has it. More importantly, these Lexus models are a bargain today. You can easily find an LS 600 HL like this one on AutoTrader for $25,000 or less. And the base model, the LS 460, is even cheaper than that. It's a stunning deal for a flagship luxury sedan, especially when you consider that this car is actually reliable, unlike some of its European competitors. So anyway, today I'm going to show you around the LS 600 HL and I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of the ultimate Japanese luxury sedan of the 2000s. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the LS 600 HL, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the best value used Japanese luxury cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Now, I'm going to start in the back of the LS 600 HL, where you will notice this isn't your typical rear seat, and that's because this car has the executive package, like I mentioned before. That was a $12,000 option, and it removes the middle seat and replaces it with this giant rear center console. So obviously you're wondering, well, what's in the rear center console? Let's get started. My favorite rear item comes when you open up this center storage compartment in the rear center console, revealing two controllers. The one on the right on the passenger side is the controller for the rear seat massage function, and you can see it has a button marked Shiatsu if you want a Shiatsu massage while you're sitting in the back of your car. How many vehicles have that have ever been sold have a button marked Shiatsu? You see headlights, you see radio presets, not Shiatsu very often, but this car has it. And obviously you can see in the rest of that controller, there are various other massage functions. You can change intensity, speed, shoulder. You can adjust various different massage items with that controller. And it's also worth noting, you can detach that controller in case you don't want it to be all the way in the center of the seats. Instead, you want it precisely in your perfect spot to reach while you're getting a massage as you're being chauffeured along in your LS. Now the controller over on the 
left on the driver's side, that controls the rear seat DVD player. And unlike in a lot of high-end luxury cars, you don't just have a screen on the back of the seats. Instead, in this car, you press on to turn on the DVD system, and the screen automatically drops down from the ceiling. And of course, with the screen deployed, you use this remote in order to change various functions on the DVD player, volume, which DVD, blah, blah, blah. This remote also is detachable. You can pull it out, and then either seat can use it, just like a remote on your TV at home. One interesting item with this DVD remote, it has some extra functions in the bottom. If you slide down this little plastic cover, you can see one of them is marked map. You press it and then the DVD screen is replaced with the map screen from the navigation system and so rear passengers can see precisely where the driver is taking you. And of course rear passengers can then scream and say no go left here go right because they can watch it all unfold from their drop down DVD screen. So at this point you're probably wondering all right well how do you listen to the DVD player? If you have a movie playing how do you hear it? It doesn't just play on the car speakers instead you have this wood paneled compartment back here you open it up and you have wireless headphones not just wireless headphones but Lexus branded <laughs> wireless headphones, which I love, you put them on, and then you can listen to your DVD player as you're being chauffeured around, getting a massage in your back seat. The compartment above the headphone compartment, that's where you actually insert the DVD that will then play in your DVD player. And of course, we are nowhere near done with the rear center console, as you can probably tell. My favorite compartment, though, is in the very front, and that would be the one for the table. You press this little switch and then the table ejects itself. You kind of turn it and then it's in place. But it's in the middle, which seems like an odd spot for it. Well, you can rectify that. The table will swivel around so that either rear passenger can use it. Although it's worth noting, not both rear passengers at once. Some ultra high end luxury cars have two tables. LS rear passengers will simply have to settle for one. Now, next up, we move on to the giant array of controls in this fixed executive package center console back here. The ones along the top row are all pretty simple. On the left, you have your climate controls. You can change the fan speed, turn on auto, whatever. Over on the right, you have the sunshades. The sunshades are not particularly unusual. I do like the fact, though, that on the door mounted sunshade, if you automatically put it in place, you will see there is a tiny little sunshade for the rear quarter window and it too is automatic because of course you pay 12 grand for the executive package you better get that now moving down from those top level controls in the center console here over on the left and right you can see there are dials those control the climate control seats you have heated and ventilated seats back here and of course also massaging seats as well no expense was spared but the best controls are along the bottom line here these are the controls for the rear seats now the ones in the middle control the position of the rear seats specifically and to choose which seat you want to control there's this little silver switch in the bottom you can move between left or right and then you move the switches above that to move the left or right seat pretty simple but it gets more special than that and specifically it gets more special if you're sitting in this seat on the passenger side in the back that's because you have two functions that the driver's side seat doesn't have one is you can move the front passenger seat forward from the rear seat so if you're looking for more legroom back here your chauffeur is driving on the driver's side you move the passenger seat forward in fact there's even a button marked auto you just press it and then the front passenger seat folds itself all the way forward as much as possible and the rear seat reclines as much as possible giving you the most legroom possible without you having to press all the controls to do it yourself just press it once and it does it for you, which is hilarious. But you also have another option back in the passenger side that the driver's side rear seat doesn't have, and that would be the ottoman. There are controls over on the left for the ottoman, and you can raise or lower the ottoman on the passenger side, giving you more leg support as you're chauffeured along in your LS. Now, one interesting quirk of all these rear seat center controls is, you can see there's a little piece printed on the center screen that says hold two 
to dim. So if you hold down the two button, which I guess is a radio preset for the rear passengers, if you hold that down, eventually the center screen will turn off. I guess rather than including a dimmer, the two button has this second function. And so if you're sitting back here and you don't want that screen to show up and force brightness on you, you hold down two and that screen will turn off. Now, of course, there are other rather interesting items in the rear of this car that are worth noting beyond just the center console. I want to start with the mirrors in the ceilings. First off, they're fuzzy. <laughs> The headliner of this car is like this fuzzy Alcantara, and so the backing of the mirrors is also fuzzy. It's nice to just touch the mirror backing, but you can also open the mirror so you look at yourself. And my favorite thing about these mirrors is the fact that the lights brighten ever so gradually, like you'd expect in a luxury car. They don't just turn on and annoy you. Instead, they come on gradually and luxuriously. But even better than the way those lights turn on is the reading lights in this car, which are located right here above your head in this sort of rear ceiling center console. If you press this little plastic button, the reading light turns on. Pretty standard, but so you want to adjust the brightness. Well, you press this little silver dial, it pops out, and then you can adjust the brightness of the reading light. When you're done adjusting the brightness, you push the little silver dial back in so it's out of your way. You don't have to deal with that dial, and then the reading lamp brightness is at your perfect level. If you want to change it again, just press the little dial, it comes back out, and you can change it. Crazy attention to detail. Next up, another interesting item in the rear seat of the LS. How about the fact that it has an ashtray on the door panel? That's not surprising. Maybe you're smoking a cigar while they're being chauffeured around, except if you open it, you can see it says no smoking, and in fact, it's fuzzy padded. This isn't an ashtray because you can't remove it and dump the ashes. Instead, it's like a really tiny storage compartment. It seems like it should have been an ashtray, but they got rid of it. Now, next we move on to the front of the LS 600 HL. One thing I noticed the moment I climbed inside this car was just how many times it says auto, the word printed throughout this car. Okay, take a look at what I mean. You have auto printed over on the window switches on the driver's door panel. You also have auto printed on the mirror control to the left of the steering wheel. You have it on this button to the right of the steering wheel. You see auto on the headlight switch, and over on the wiper control, you have auto printed once, and you have auto printed twice. Next, move on to the climate controls, and you see auto once again, and you see auto twice. Then you go to the interior rear view mirror, and once again, auto is printed there. And this is just the front. You go back to the back, and I found auto in two more places. Here's one, and here's two. This car just has an enormous number of things that it can do automatically for you. Of course, that's because everything in this car is designed for optimum comfort and quality and usefulness. And there are a few other examples throughout the front of this car. One is the center console lid. Okay, take a look at this. In your car, you open the center console, it just opens. In this car, when you open it, it first slides backwards to sort of get out of your face and then it opens. It has this crazy hinge that has a dual stage process just to make it more luxurious. But even better than that, when you open the center console lid, you can see inside the center console, there's this little tray hanging on the top. In most cars, that's a little plastic thing. You just remove it, even on high-end luxury cars. In this car, that tray is hinged, and so you can just move it up to move it out of your way instead of having a crappy plastic thing that could rattle around or get lost like it would in a lot of other cars. Other interesting items of attention to detail. How about the fact that this car has a button to adjust the seatbelt position? In most cars, even high-end luxury cars, you can manually adjust the seatbelt on the driver's side, the B-pillar, because it's not something you do very often. But in this car, there's a button that will do it automatically for you, even though you probably do it like once a year, if that. And how about the fact that there is a separate button in this car to wash the headlights? Most cars with headlight washers, they'll wash like every fifth time you wash the windshield, or they'll wash the headlights if the headlights are on when you wash the windshield. But in this car, there is a separate button to wash the headlights, just in case you find them to be getting a little dirty. This car also has some other impressive benefits. For example, I think it was the first car ever to have a self-parking system, a self-parallel parking system that will do it for you. You activate that system with this little button on the steering wheel. 
I'm not gonna test it out because I don't really trust an eight-year-old parallel parking system, but it's there. Other interesting quirks in the front of this car, to the left of the steering wheel, by the driver's left knee, there is a little storage compartment that comes out of the bottom of the dashboard. Not all that uncommon. A few cars have storage here. This one has a weird item, though. You open the storage compartment with a little button that you push, and it pops open, fine. But when it's open, the button stays lit. <laughs> as if like you've left your trunk open and it lets you know with a little warning light. In this car, there's even a warning light for the little compartment to the left of the steering wheel. If you've left that open, that is a very odd piece of attention to detail. And then we move into the glove box where you will see the owner's manual. You can't miss the owner's manual in this car because it is absolutely massive. It is approximately the size of a car battery and about that heavy. I have never seen an owner's manual this giant and this dense before. The regular owner's manual itself is 796 pages in length. That is the longest owner's manual I think I've ever seen in any vehicle. It is crazily, crazily long. When you buy this car, you also get a service guide, which is 76 pages long, and then you get a warranty booklet, which is 32 pages long, and then there's a separate owner's manual for the infotainment system that wasn't contained within the 796-page original owner's manual, and that infotainment owner's manual is 335 pages on its own. The total owner's manual page length in this car is 1,239 pages. Absolutely unbelievable. I tried to open up that owner's manual and look for quirks and features of the owner's manual, and I gave up. When I came to page 230, <laughs> And there was a section about how the adaptive cruise control sensor wouldn't be able to properly detect cotton. <laughs> if maybe the car in front of you is made of cotton, it won't be able to detect it. I was like, all right, I'm done. Not reading anymore. This is too dense, too thick for me. And next we move on to the infotainment screen. This infotainment system, obviously it's 10 years old, not that advanced, not too much to talk about, but there are a few quirks I noticed. The biggest of which is in the voice settings menu. You go in there and you have a few different voice options, not all that surprising, but there is one crazy one. You can choose which speaker the voice guidance for the navigation system comes out of. You can choose between a center speaker or the driver side speaker. So I guess if you can't hear it well enough, you can move the voice guidance over to your side or if the passenger doesn't wanna hear it as loudly, you can choose where the voice guidance is coming through in the car. Never seen that before. This car also gives you the ability to configure the lane change turn signal flashes. So when you just tap the turn signal, how many times it flashes to make a lane change, it gives you the option three, five, seven, nine, or 11 flashes for a lane change. Why not four? Why not six? Why no even numbers? <laughs> Why don't you just give us an even number configurability, Toyota? You let us configure that, but not as much as we want. Now, next we move under the hood in this car, and a quick glance under here, and you can see exactly what I'm gonna talk about, and that is the plastic covering. Now, I review a lot of cars that have a plastic engine cover, but very few that have everything completely covered and sealed up like this car. They really didn't want you to mess around with this hybrid system. It's all completely smooth and plastic covered. Now, with that said, there are a couple of little holes and spots where you can get through the plastic. For example, you can see on the engine cover itself, there's a little door where you can insert engine oil. There are also two little circle cutouts over on the driver's side for brake fluid and for windshield washer fluid. But otherwise, this is a completely sealed up engine compartment and you can't see the engine at all. Now, next up, since I'm around the front of this car, I wanna talk about some of the ways that you can distinguish the LS600HL from the base level Lexus LS460, which was just a gas-powered car that had a lower sticker price. This car is so subtle that it's actually difficult to tell apart the really high-end version, which of course this one is. But one way you can tell it apart is the Lexus badge in front. Instead of a standard Lexus badge, this one has some blue tint to it to indicate that it's a hybrid model. The regular LS wasn't hybrid powered, but this one was. But my favorite subtle little way you can distinguish this one from the regular LS are these hybrid badges on the rear doors. There's one on both sides, and every time I see an LS from this generation, the first thing I look at is those rear doors to see if it's a 600 HL, and of course it basically never is. This was a very uncommon car and very expensive. And of course you can also tell if you're looking at an LS 600 HL 
well because it has an LS600HL badge across the back. And so I figured now might be a good time to address why they called it the LS600HL because it's a random jumble of letters and numbers that kind of sounds like a DVD player. So here's the deal. LS is obviously Lexus's top end luxury sedan. They've been using that name for 30 years. The base model was the LS460 because it used a 4.6 liter V8. Now this uses a 5 liter V8. So you'd think they would call it the LS500, but Lexus's feeling is that a hybrid engine adds a certain number of liters and so they always round their hybrid engines up. And so in this case, instead of LS500, you have LS600. The H stands for hybrid, so you have LS600H, and then the L is long wheelbase. The LS came in two wheelbases. There was a standard wheelbase and a long wheelbase, but you could only get the LS600 with the long wheelbase, so all LS600 models are badged with the L. And finally, we move on to the trunk itself, which of course is power operated. I'm holding down the button on the key fob, and it opens right up. A couple of interesting items worth noting about the trunk. One is the fact that it's kind of small. I think because of the hybrid batteries and those reclining rear seats, this trunk isn't the sizable giant thing you might expect from a full-size luxury sedan. Instead, there's more room devoted to the actual interior, the passenger cabin in this car. Now, the most interesting thing about the trunk is the fact that when you lift up the trunk floor, you can see the spare tire and there's tools, screwdriver, jack, and there are also two AA batteries in here. These are replacement batteries for the remote control for the rear DVD player in case you ever run out. Instead of just buying AA's at CVS, <laughs> you can go into the floor of your trunk and there are extra batteries waiting for you. And one final item worth noting with this car is the key. Now you can see the actual key is fairly standard looking, doesn't look like anything special, but this isn't the only key for this car. There's also a credit card size key that will fit directly in your wallet just like a credit card or your driver's license. You just leave that in there, and when you walk up to the door handle, it will read that key, unlock the car, and read that key to start the car and drive off, so you don't have to take an actual key with you anywhere, just another credit card in your wallet. And so, those are the quirks and features of the LS600HL. Now it's time to get the flagship Lexus out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the LS600HL. Now the first thing you notice when you get in this car is just how the sheer comfort of this vehicle. I've driven Bentleys, S-Class, pretty much every high-end luxury car. And this is up there on the level of all of them, short of Rolls-Royce, in terms of comfort, quietness of driving experience. Now, in terms of materials, it doesn't it doesn't equal a Bentley. It's not as nice in here as a Bentley, but just on the level of quietness and, and comfort, it is up there with the very, very, very best. It really is. Um, truly an impressive car and truly just whisper quiet and it just feels like the kind of car you could just eat miles and eat miles and just sit there and pure luxury bliss while you do it. Now acceleration in this car is actually not as strong uh, as you might think given the horsepower number. It doesn't have that S uh, 600, that V12 kick to it. But I, I look at the fuel economy number and I see that after refueling, this car is averaging 23.7 miles per gallon, which is probably double what you would get in an S-Class uh, with a V12 or something like that. Obviously it's not 50, it's not like a Prius, but that kind of fuel economy is decent and it matters to some people and that's pretty good. Steering and handling, uh, kind of a mixed bag. It's exactly as you'd expect for a car like this. Um, if you don't expect that it, it's going to be a fun, fast, you know, throw it around car, you won't be disappointed. It isn't that, man. It just, the ride quality is so good. Those lane line bumps, I wince when I go over them in my Mercedes. And this thing, it's just like, ah, uh, <laughs> it's so nice. But anyway, steering and handling, you know, it's fine. Um, it's exactly as you'd expect. It's soft, very, very light steering, the kind of thing you could turn it with a pinky finger, which is what people want when they get a Lexus luxury car, you know? The people who buy this thing just want the ultimate in comfort and refinement. They don't want, you know, hard steering and that sort of thing, uh, a really tight feel. They just want it to be easy and it's that. The star of this show for this car is undoubtedly this, the quietness is almost hard to explain because in addition to being uh, a, a luxury vehicle and really nice and expensive and they've done a good job and all that. It's also 
a hybrid. And so some of the time when you're driving, you're in electric mode where it's even quieter. And I mean, this is truly one of the quieter, more refined luxury cars that I've driven. And so that's the 2010 Lexus LS 600 HL. Like I said, this thing doesn't look like much, but it is much. It has ample power from its hybrid five liter V8. And by the way, this will easily get 20, 25 miles per gallon, which is pretty good for a flagship luxury sedan. It's loaded with features and amenities like you'd expect from a car like this. It's supremely comfortable and it's an excellent deal on the used market. And now it's time to give this car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the LS600 HL looks fine, but rather dull, certainly not beautiful, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Acceleration 0-60 to 60 is 5.8 seconds, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is very numb with body roll and soft suspension and all the other luxury car stuff, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor is very low. This does feel like a more relaxed, more comfortable Camry, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Finally, cool factor, and this isn't that bad. Car enthusiasts know and respect these, but everyone else just thinks you're at a used Lexus ES and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 18 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This car is surprisingly well equipped given its age and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is truly wonderful, falling just short of the very best and it gets a 9 out of 10. Same deal with quality, truly at the top of the top and reliability is too. The only demerit is that some of the interior materials aren't quite up to the very best levels and it gets a 9 out of 10. Practicality is normal for the class and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value and these are bargains. You can get a nice one on Auto Trader for like 25 grand, and it gets an 8 out of 10 for a total daily score of 37 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 55 out of 100, which places it here among other luxury sedans of its era. The LS600 HL does terribly in the weekend categories, but its daily score is on par with modern luxury sedans because it's such a bargain and because it's so reliable and comfortable. The LS600 HL is an amazing car, even though it looks like a stretched Camry. Sunshades are not particularly unusual. Most luxury cars have them. I do like the fact, though, that on the door-mounted sunshade, if you inflate, like I said, it doesn't look like much, but it is much. This thing will get some of them.